Welcome back, I'm back, and, uh, oh, hold on, keep forgetting that. So irritating that the camera doesn't start up right. There we go. And, uh, in case you didn't hear, I have a cat in my lap right now. <laughs> she hopped up just before I went live, so I decided to uh, make sure that she... No, not going to say anything this time? <laughs> She's definitely purring. <laughs> but, yeah. So I figured I'd just pet her. As one does with a cat. But, um, yeah. So tonight we are on to uh, demo disc number 80. Uh, or 82, I mean, which means we only have 30 left in the uh, PlayStation Magazine series. Well, 30 issues left. I, I've gone over that distinction. Um, next week, we're going to be uh, weaving PlayStation Underground uh, issues back into the mix again. Um, I'll be getting my uh, Polymega back tomorrow and um, you know everything's preloaded onto there so that'll be next week and uh, I've got something uh, I've got a, a time filler plan for tomorrow that I'm a little late to the party on this one for a good reason and I hope they keep something similar going but I don't know so it'll at least buy me a couple of months but, um, hey, that's my hand you're licking. So, let's go ahead and fire up the demo disc. Oh, I should probably turn this down a little bit before it fires up in earnest so it doesn't come over the microphone such purring <laughs> oh that was smooth all right starting off with inside the game and an interview with Hideo Kojima he really does look like he's aged a bit, but he's aged well in the past 20 years. In the gaming world, if anyone mentions the name Hideo Kojima, Metal Gear Solid is bound to come up in the conversation. Currently, the latest installment of Metal Gear Solid... Snake or Antarctic Gear, Adventure. It will extend the legacy <laughs> of the game's designer, developer, and producer. Born in Tokyo and raised near Kobe, Mr. Kojima is an interesting blend of renaissance man and high-tech guru. The PlayStation Underground traveled to Tokyo to get a more detailed portrait of the man who would be Solid Snake. I never thought of working in the video game industry. Actually, as a child, I wanted to become an astronaut, or I wanted to become a naturalist, and I always enjoyed watching film. But the Japanese film industry is very closed, it's feudalistic. Right around then, I ran into the home computer and I started playing video games. And that's when I started thinking about working in the video game industry. Kojima-san landed a job at Konami Entertainment, working in the home computer Makes department. sense that he wanted to get into film. the first Metal Gear in 1987. Snatcher and Police Knots followed a few years later. With the release of Metal Gear Solid for the PlayStation in 1998, the gaming world could not help but notice the birth of a star. And back before Metal Gear Solid, my games were for the Japanese market only. So I never thought about the rest of the world. But once Metal Gear Solid came out, I had to start thinking about fans all over the world. So that's a big change. Part of that change is raising the bar of expectations and imagination when creating... I like that they had some video clips of uh, Zone of the sure Enders in there too, though. Enjoy what I create. <laughs> there are all 
all kinds of people all over the world that will be playing my game. Figuring out what people would possibly enjoy is what's very challenging, but at the same time very fun about creating video games. Making people feel that something is beautiful or something is very scary, that's the easy part. What's difficult is making people feel that what they're playing is fun. Video games are probably the only medium that allows people to do that. During the planning stage, since everything is in your head, you can really do anything. And it's all up to me, up to my imagination. So I can come up with anything, and it's so fun. When I give all my ideas to my people and they start putting things together, when I actually see the game coming together, it really is a gratifying moment. This innovator has a consistent style that holds to form. His technique has been influenced by film directors like Akira Kurosawa and especially Alfred Hitchcock switching between first-person POV and objective bird's-eye view to create tension and suspense. Hideo Kojima has become known for blending the cinematic technique with the latest gaming technology to create new levels of shared personal gaming experiences. Back when I started in the industry, people said games and film were like water and oil, that they never mix. But that's changed. We now have a common language. Video games, film, music, everything has become so digital. And I think there will be a lot of blending going on. You'll see totally new discoveries sprouting out from the fusion of these things. Eventually, maybe even the word game might be gone. And he's still working on that. I don't think video games have reached that status yet. Film, movies, and novels, the good ones, in addition to entertaining people, they have positive effects. And I don't think video games have that effect yet. So hopefully in the future, there will be video games out there that have this positive effect on people's lives, just like movies and novels. You can be sure when that happens, Hideo Kojima will be at the front of the line having a positive effect on people. He shares his secret for worldwide success. Video games are things that people play with. People I'd say he achieves that with Metal so Gear what Solid. I is first you interact with different people out there. And then you should read a lot of novels, see a lot of movies. And try to establish There are a lot of people who will uh, speak of that in the same breath as their favorite movies. So my piece of advice is to know people. You want to know more about the upcoming release of Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater? Check back here, inside the game. And don't forget to check out the latest Metal Gear Solid 3 trailer included in this issue. All right. Next up, Gaming Goes Retro with Midway Arcade Treasures. They've actually got a couple of these on the uh, uh, disc to play, so we'll actually get to do some uh, retro arcade goodness tonight. Bye-bye, Siren. You didn't take all your fur with you. Games, it's time to do something unusual. That is, look back. Available now for the PlayStation 2 is a nostalgia series for anyone who is out of diapers by 1980. Midway <laughs> Treasures, a compilation. I wasn't out of diapers by 1980. Producing and working <laughs> really brought back some memories. But I still played those games in the arcade. You know, I would walk home, stop at the pizza parlor, you know, I'd grab a soda, grab some change, and spend, you know, half hour, an hour playing these games. Sound familiar? Defender, Joust, and Gauntlet are just a few of the classic quarter crunchers that you can relive with this game. For some people, it probably would be difficult to fight the urge to update these Oh, freaking Sinistar. <clears throat> I'd never really played Sinistar until recently. We wanted to keep it. Um, like at the Garcade. And few remember better than these guys. Now but it's that, that that's a pretty damn creepy game for what it's got to work with. George remembers what it was like working on Spy Hunter, which is included on Midway Arcade Treasures. We were this little development team that nobody paid attention to, sort of in a, in a warehouse in the company. Like, it was just a bunch of guys with a passion for games that had talked the company into letting us try to work on games. Let's go! Mark was the man behind Smash TV, also included on Midway Arcade Treasures. 
I knew Smash TV was going to be a classic game uh, probably two weeks after I started the game. Most features of the industry have changed, but the raw thrill of launching a new game existed then as it does now. You know, put some great graphics up front, uh, do really nice big explosions, sound effects, and you know, hook the player um, early. When you'd walk in, you would hear, big money, big prizes, bingo! <laughs> So it was uh, definitely an intention. Big money, big prizes. I love it. I was always going into the arcade and seeing kids, you know, pumping money into the machine, enjoying it, looking around, laughing, smiling. Designing for the arcade was different than it is for home play. The arcades were inherently social. When a cool game was in an arcade, it had a crowd around it. The thing that's changed the least over the last 20 years in game development uh, is just the kind of the, the core um, requirement that you entice people along. And that's just what these classic games figured out how to do, with simple ideas and simple controls. It's very clear to the user uh, what his mission is. A uh, couple of buttons, one joystick, a few bad guys on the screen, it's very clear. Or two, if you're Smash TV or the medium has evolved. Robotron. That yet there's still entertainment value in the old stuff. And they managed to create that enticement and entertainment with paltry technical horsepower. Our tools were really primitive. Our art tools were, um, I mean, they were one step beyond coloring in grid paper. I had a roll of paper and I drew the road on this and I just kept on rolling the paper and drawing the road. <laughs> the hardware designer for Spy Hunter told me that I had uh, 4,096 colors to select from. Uh, but I can only use 32 at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Laughable by today's standards, but somehow these games still suck you in. It's kind of like watching a great old movie. It's, uh, you know, you've seen it before, you've seen it a hundred times. Maybe it doesn't well, laughable by, you know, 2004 uh, standards, but not that far back in memory. Great. I mean, it still tells a story. And remember, there was like 10 years before this, the, the PlayStation 1 hadn't even come out yet. Or was about to. And you still had to worry about those pallet sizes. You know, would pump money into it, and indeed that's what happened. And 15 years later, Mark is still blowing away players with innovation. He's creative director at Midway Sports. Sometimes he marvels at how far games have come. Back in 88, 89, that's really when we first uh, began to digitize images. Digitizing textures for walls, faces. And so that was really kind of um, groundbreaking at the time. We've gone from three or four man teams to 50 man teams. Uh, at bigger companies, 100 man teams, 150 man teams. I have no idea what it used to cost us to fund a four man team back then, but I'm sure it wasn't $12 million. And those big bucks <laughs> and big teams are making games better and better. Well, I think the future of video games is incredibly bright. Um, it's a very exciting time now because the technology again is about to quadruple over the previous generation. I think the future of video games is going to be games that basically allow you to have this interactive experience with a movie, which is when was the PS3 first announced? Because I'm wondering if it was getting close to that point here. First announced at E3 2005. Okay. So we've got a little bit more time before we start to see the uh, beginning of the end. Behind the scenes with Sucker Punch for Sly 2 Band of Thieves. I'd say about a Sly month Cooper, came up with or if you uh, that really follow the all the wrong slang, gay dick. Work together to pull off a string of big heists. When I say heist, I mean like classic Hollywood heist film kind of heist, where the last third of the film is all about this big, spectacular, elaborate crime involving many thieves working together to do something huge. Sly is the charismatic leader of 
the band of thieves. He's okay, got to gotta look up He's the timing on something else. Pressure that makes him special. He's getting a little bit more daring with what kinds of crimes he's doing, and this time we're, we're actually introducing. Okay, Ocean's Eleven came out three years before this, so uh, that might have been an inspiration. Murray's the brawn, and Sly is kind of like the soul. We're setting up heists and jobs for the crew to do together. An example of that is the recon mission, where you must go in and uh, take pictures that you can take back to headquarters, and Bentley, the turtle being the brain of the operation, will take these pictures and formulate a master plan. Once the master plan comes together, each character has a role in executing that plan. We wanted to maintain really strong visuals, really strong, you know, emotionally involving characters, and continue to deliver the great feel of the character that I think we did really well in the last game. We really want you, when you're playing the game, to feel like you're part of the world, living an adventure, um, finding your own way through the world and the things that there are to do in that world. We don't want people to play Sly, we want people to be Sly. We want people to feel like they are not playing through levels as much as experiencing different episodes in the universe of Sly Cooper and his gang. Okay. Done with the inside the game thing. Next up, some cool moves. Starting with an easy way to earn money and Champions of Noroth Realms of EverQuest. Hi, my name is Joshua Pfeiffer. I work here in Sony Format QA. Today I'm going to show you a cool move for Champions of Noroth nice Realms hat. of EverQuest. It's an easy way to make some quick money. The first thing you want to but do I bet he doesn't have, um, another you know, you rank insignia on his, his hat. You can actually even add a copy of your own player. Now take the second player and remove whatever you want to sell. You can pretty much drop everything she has. Now take the first player, pick up all the items, Let's go talk to the shopkeeper. So this is kind of an old trick. You found. And one that games like this eventually cracked down on. Because <laughs> it's a very a easy of way to duplicate this. items. You can do it as many times as you want. Then if you want, you can even import, delete your imported character and then import her back and redo the whole process again. And just keep making money. Because she'll always have the armor that she was saved with. Now, I don't think I have to tell you why this is such a cool move. Quite obviously, if you have all that money, you can buy all the items and weapons you want, making the game way easy to beat. And you can keep using them on the harder difficulty levels. Now, I also can't take credit for this, as it was shown to me by a fellow tester, Bruce Cochran. But I thought it was my duty to share it with you guys in the gaming community. So good luck and happy gaming. One thing, though, is that... I don't know. In a lot of games like that, the best stuff you get isn't stuff you buy. How to get all the wizard cards on the first day on Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Hi, my name is Josh Kuykendall. I'm from Format QA. And now I'm going to show you a cool move for Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Never been busted by the SWAT team. Cards before you even finish the first day. So here you are at your first day at Hogwarts. Now after you come down out of the dormitory, what you want to do is you want to go to your first classroom on your right here. And then open the door and enter the classroom. And then when you come into the classroom, you'll see a bunch of desks. And what you want to do is you want to stand in front of the desk and then hit the X button to search the desk. A wizard card! 
and you'll notice that in some of the desks you'll find a wizard card. And also, if you look in some of the other desks, you can find a five pack of wizard cards, which will give you five wizard cards instead of one. Gunhilda of Gorsmoor. One-eyed humpbacked witch famous for developing a cure for dragon pox. <laughs> and then after you save your game, just quit to main menu, and then reload your same game, and then go collect those wizard cards again. Now if you keep saving and reloading your game like this, Harry Potter will collect a whole lot of wizard cards. And you notice that you have multiples of each card. You take those cards and you find somebody who's trading wizard cards somewhere around Hogwarts. You trade those cards with them and soon you'll have all 101 wizard cards, which gives Harry Potter the max life that he can have. So if you accidentally mess up and you're fighting a troll and you take a club, you'll be okay. Good luck and have fun. Okay. Man, today is all about save scumming, I see. <clears throat> SSX3, how to achieve high scores in Super Pipe. This one's probably not going to deal with saves coming, though. <laughs> and today I'm here to show you a cool move for SSX3. I'm going to show you how to get the high score on any of the Super Pipes. Basically, you want to get your multipliers up there as quick as possible. And you want to keep your multipliers going by doing manuals in between your trick. Just pull back or f push forward on the right analog stick in between each trick and that'll keep your multipliers going otherwise you only have about two seconds between tricks before you lose your multipliers and once you get your uber trick meter maxed out then you want to hold your tricks as long as possible because that's how you get the most possible points That Zoe or well, you can break it up and do variations and hand plants, but you lose a lot of your speed, and therefore you won't have as much air time. So I recommend just doing air tricks. <laughs> oh, jeez! That thirty X is making me nervous. Gonna lose all of that if he timer because if you crashes across the finish line, you'll get zero. Yeah, that too. I oh, didn't get that multiplier. And as you can see, my multiplier is up to 38 now, and it wouldn't be if I didn't continually do manuals in between my tricks. You know, about. 10 seconds left or so, it's about time to uh, head to the finish line. <laughs> Jeez. And that's how you get the high score on any of the super pipes. Just keep in mind that as you advance to the more difficult super pipes, you want to use a character who has built up attributes. But just make sure that you keep doing manuals in between each of your tricks, and you should have no problem achieving the high score. Have fun. All right. No memory card downloads this week, huh? Interesting. Alright, let's check out the extras. Making of the Drive 3R commercial. This is my destiny. Driver coming on the scene back in 1999 really represented the birth of the vehicular action genre. Man, and, uh, now here, this disc is full of Atari and uh, Hideo Kojima and, well, not so much Kojima, but Atari and Midway that are just 
basically shells of what they currently were. Realism. Driver 3 kind of perfects the idea of a... Obviously, Midway's no longer around. A couple of months back, a producer that we used named Simon Miller came to... Metal Gear Solid is probably not coming back. As a company to do our spots for driver Unless Konami does, like, remasters, which are, you know, being whispered about. Sean Mullins had a terrific experience in... Actually, on that shoot, I learned that he was a bit of a driver junkie himself. Same thing, we're just going to go this way with these guys. The director, Sean Mullins, uh, actually pitched us on a short film uh, um, that we just uh, sunk our teeth into right away. We thought it was just the greatest thing in the world. We decided to make a film about Tanner and about Tanner delivering a car back to Kalita. My name is. In the course of that uh, delivery, in the course of that gauntlet, he goes through uh, being shot at by thousands of rounds of ammunition. Uh, does incredible high speed precision driving. 100 mile an hour down alleyways. I mean, I guess this is getting into stuntman territory, too. Bad guy cars that aren't so lucky in the pursuit. All of it leads up to him bringing the car back to Kalita. Today's our big day for wrecking everything. That we're asked to create something in the air of having the car tumble through. In preparation for a stunt like that, I mean, it's a combination of, uh, you know, everybody here. You know, you rely on a, a lot of your teammates. Stunt driving seems like one of those things that would be absolutely fun and absolutely terrifying all at once. Good lord. It looks so fast, too. Every time you see something like that in a game or in a movie, it's slow motion like that. <laughs> but it was just over in a second. Oh, maybe 12 cars, something like that. Um, and uh, we're kind of on the last shot of the second day. Okay, uh, what we have out of the way of product is, uh, looks like four gallons of gasoline. I love how the two cars crash and their back ends are what uh, ignite. Not the front end. It's very, very Atari. It's very, very cutting edge for um, the industry that we're in. Um, I don't think anyone's tried to execute something on this level. This project for Driver 3 is by far the largest thing that, uh, that uh, we've ever been a part of. All right. We've got Jet Li at the Metreon in San Francisco for the launch of Rise to Honor. Awesome. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It didn't come back. Okay, there we go. Now we're back. <laughs> Let's... at Sony's Metreon Theater in San Francisco just to get a glimpse of Jet Li, world-renowned action star, and star of the brand new video game Rise to Honor. I made a lot of films already. This first video game. <laughs> Worldwide film star. Very exciting to work on that with uh, PlayStation 2. Usually you're watching movies. The audience just watching. 
but this time the audience become director. They can control Jet Li. I'm still the actor. <laughs> I do my job. So they can control Jet Li fighting with the bad guy. The Metreon was the perfect location to unveil Rise to Honor because the San Francisco landmark happens to be the setting of one of the game's most exciting levels. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Wallace. I'm the producer of Rise to Honor and we're here at the Metreon in San Francisco. We actually use this location for parts of the video game and you can tell by how cool this place is why we wanted to do that. In fact, there's a scene where the Jet Li character, Kit Yoon, and the female lead, Michelle, come running down this escalator and they have their boss encounter right back here. I am Tung Lung. I'll be Jet Li. <laughs> so right in this area here, Jet comes in, a bunch of baddies surround him, and the action starts. Hmm. Okay, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> One of the cool things about this area is that it's the first place in the game where you can do collaborative fighting. So all the player has to do is basically do a grab move on Michelle, just like you would on any other enemy, and then you're able to do these like long distance collaborative attacks. <laughs> All right, I need a female volunteer. So now I just take her, we swing her out, and she's kicking exactly just like that. Something like that. You get the idea. Michelle! <laughs> this is one of the really unique looking areas of the Metreon, and we love that view out that way. You can see the MoMA in the background, and it's really cool visually. And as he's coming down this catwalk, Bad guys start coming across these beams and jumping over, and he's encountered with a fight right here in the middle. Also, one of the things graphically that we're doing in the game is that you can see the reflection of the fighting characters against this window. Came across really cool. So the best technique for getting through this area, grab hold of enemies, chuck them over the railing, and you'll have no problem getting through. <laughs> Outside, the anticipation was really building as some fans had been waiting hours to get a glimpse of the Rise to Honor star. We come all the way from Oakland to get involved with Jet Li and get his, get his autograph and all of this. Yeah, I want his autograph, man. Standing here for like two and a half hours. I will do flips to meet Jet Li, I swear I will. We'll do flips to meet Jet Li. <laughs> Just like a high, anything high action. If you love Jet Li, if you love his movies. Game with the lick right here, I love it. Fighting style in the game looks tight, so yeah, I think it's gonna be a good game. Probably the best fighting game I've played in a while. Since Rise to Honor is styled after classic Hong Kong action films, it was only fitting that the crowd got a chance to see and play the game in the IMAX theater. Welcome to Sony's official launch of Rise to Honor. So our fight system is based on the ability to attack people coming at you from any direction, okay? To be able to launch pinpoint attacks anywhere in 360 degree space. I hope you guys enjoy... Oh. <laughs> hey, everybody! I'm always the actor, but this time, you're the director. As the crowd enjoyed the game on the 80-foot screen, we got a chance to sit down with Jet and find out why he wanted to make video games. I already... I mean, why wouldn't you? One day I'm become a very <laughs> old man, like a 60, 70 year old man. I cannot fight on the screen anymore. Okay. But the technology okay. maybe can help me motion capture my movement uh, while I'm still young. Yeah. <laughs> so in that way, maybe one day you can still use the motion capture to make another video game or maybe movie. We never know in the future the technology maybe really can help old men become young men fighting on the screen for videos. I think this is my dream. For those who weren't lucky enough to make it in for the IMAX screening, there were plenty of other opportunities to preview the game. And for those fans who waited for hours to meet their favorite superstar, they were not disappointed as Jet took the time to sign a few autographs and talk with his fans about the game. The basic idea is jelly movement. We need to know, we need a, some signature move. By the player, when they play the game, they know right away that's the jelly. <laughs> After that, we need to do different levels to create a different kind of movement. For both sides, we learn each other. You know, we know how to make movies, but we didn't know how to make a game. But they know how to make a game, but they do know martial arts. <laughs> so, like a whole team, teamwork. <laughs> So 
So check out Rise to Honor, available now for the PlayStation 2. So one thing that's going to be kind of interesting when we start with the PlayStation Underground uh, PS1 stuff is it's formatted very much like this. It's just on two CDs because they didn't have DVD yet. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, one of them even has some like uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 stuff on it. So I'm looking forward to that. So what I'm doing here right now is I'm, I'm pressing the X button every couple of moments to see if that makes it so that we can get all the way through the credits this time. But yeah, so, you know, there'll be, you know, one disc that's basically like the playground and then another disc that's like all the other stuff on one of the PS2 uh, OPM issues. So that's kind of why it ended up merging. Because now they had all this space to work with. There is one uh, PlayStation 2 PS Underground issue. Uh, 5.1. We'll obviously get to that eventually too. And also, I think one of the later, uh, I think like 4.4 .4 was actually one PS1 and one PS2 disc. Okay, yep. Tapping the X button every couple of seconds seems to be doing the trick. That's it for the credits. Let's get to uh, track Gran Turismo 4. Understanding that the extra effort, the scrutiny of detail, and the teamwork that blends individual talents are what separate the good from the truly great. When it comes to delivering the heart-quickening thrills and demonstrating the quick reflexes and decision-making needed to be a great race car driver, the undisputed leader of the pack is the Gran Turismo franchise. And while they have set the bar in terms of sales, it's the authentic aspects of the gameplay physics, the realistic I mean, of the car Forza is pretty decent too, but... Gran Turismo racing game out in front. They they just don't quite come close. Forza Horizon's a different story. But Forza Motorsport is just I mean it's good. But it doesn't have the same cultural cachet, you know. An avid follower of Formula One and many other types of racing, Mr. Yamauchi began his quest to create a truly realistic driving video game in 1992. He produced Motor Tune Grand Prix and then altered the course of the racing genre with the Gran Turismo series. I gotta say, Forza Horizon is one of the few Xbox exclusive games that uh, I would love to see on the PlayStation. <laughs> The reason we collect data is not because without it we couldn't make the game. Rather, it's more to confirm the accuracy of the car we made in the studio. So we don't apply the real data directly to the game. For the photo shoot of the cars, we take a large selection of pictures. Shots from four basic angles, diagonal shots, and others. We also do sound recordings of the actual cars. While Mr. Yamauchi oversees the entire process, there are specialists assigned to specific tasks. This is the area for taking photographs of the cars. My job is to shoot the beauty shots from many angles. 
I also manage the other photographers who also take photos. Additionally, when the 3D models of the cars are constructed, these photos are used as references and are also used to provide textures. In the new Gran Turismo 4, there will be over 500 different cars to choose from. And if you think that's a lot of data to gather, think about what it takes to map the over 50 courses the new game will feature. Using all types of technology, the team will measure virtually every nook and cranny of every turn, building, and bump down to the millimeter. All of these precise measurements go hand in hand with how the car drives. The physics engine of Gran Turismo 4 has been totally redesigned to create one of the most realistic driving experiences ever offered in a gaming console. In addition, we choose several of the cars and gather data. We measure the car's maximum speeds, record gravity forces, and assess their cornering abilities. Actual race car drivers are enlisted to provide information on driving, especially the more elusive feel of a course. I'd like to think that I can bring some extra insight to the game. Um, ah, I didn't realize I was muted. I was just saying uh, um, uh, that I think it might be interesting to have all of these Gran Turismo 4 features combined into a single video at some point. So I'm going to kind of uh, take note on that. Sorry, I don't know what it is, but there's been some, like, sound making its way over the um, microphone when I'm not talking, so I've been muting and I forgot to unmute. Gran Turismo is so successful at creating the most authentic racing experience that people from every sector of the automotive industry want to be involved in the franchise. The automakers are realizing that's another uh, thing that uh, Gran Turismo has is those special relationship with the auto special relationships with the automakers. While Polyphony Digital's president enjoys all the attention paid to his game, he always strives to focus on the original reason for creating Gran Turismo. First of all, I'm happy that we were able to work closely with car manufacturers and with pro race car drivers. At the same time, there's an increased risk that I'll forget the feeling I had when I originally created Gran Turismo, namely the sense of just another car owner with the enthusiastic emotions that users feel toward their cars. It's important never to forget the feeling from the user's perspective. Gran Turismo is a gift to all the people who love cars around the world. Even now, that hasn't changed. Check back here at Track GT4 and find out about. I wouldn't say I love cars, but I love driving. That's one thing that I do miss about Gran Turismo is I wish there was a way that you could just leisurely drive with some of these cars. Um, that was something that you can get uh, that I was able to get off out of Drive Club, and that was pretty satisfying. All right, it's about time to go into the playground. Our first game is Scooby-Doo Mystery Mayhem. Soiks. Open Tome of Doom. I suppose this is an appropriate enough game to be playing on Halloween night. I actually put out some uh, candy in a bowl in the hallway for... Uh, Nearby trick or treaters. So we've got actually quite a few, uh, quite a few children in the building that could get to it. So oh, three demo levels. All right.
But of course, I also made sure that I was choosing um, uh, candies that I wouldn't mind eating for the next six months. <laughs> Okay. Whoa. Tome of Doom button wasn't doing anything. Alright, that's swapping characters. Your turn. Your turn. Oh, I'm not picking up the Scooby Snacks. Okay, gotcha. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, this is silly. Oh, I see the Scooby Snacks restore health, and I didn't need that at the time. Okay. Where am I supposed to go? There we go. Alright, let's run. Uh, no. Uh, oh, there's a door there. <laughs> okay. That was creepy. Nice use of the shading, or the shadows. That's kind of cool. Yeah, let's uh, scarf down a few Scooby Snacks here. You found the hideout key. And a box of Scooby Snacks. Okay, this is a different area. Looks the same, but the shelf layout is different. Let me through. Like, look at that freaky book, Scoob. Raggy, what did you find there, Scoob? Hey, like maybe it's a clue. Thanks. Wow, that wasn't Old Man Jenkins that time. Like that book just gobbled up the ghost like it was an eggplant and marshmallow sandwich. <laughs> Rabbit? Where? Eggplant marshmallow sandwich. Show this ghost gobbling book to the others. Hey there, Dosnerd. Welcome, welcome. I don't know what that's there for. Oh, 
That's cool. Shaggy, Scooby, is that you? I can't see anything without my glasses. I was following a rather strange looking ghost when I tripped over a book and lost them. Can you help me find them, please? I guess. Dang it. Okay, now let's try to get by unnoticed. There, that'll help. Oh, Lutefisk. Oh, geez. That's a that's a nightmare from my past. My uh, so I I come from you know Norwegian fa uh, ancestry, and my great uncle would always uh, at Christmas we'd go to my great uncle's place, and he'd always threaten us that if we didn't eat a little bit of lutefisk we wouldn't be allowed to open presents. He never held to that, so I've still never eaten lutefisk, but uh, it's not exactly something I'm eager to try. <laughs> Thanks, Shaggy. Hey, what's this? It's a groovy old book me and Scoob found. And like when I say ghosts are into this... There's an old joke about uh, how... Because um, uh, lutefisk is actually fish soaked in lye, which is normally a poison. And... Uh, there was a, a joke about how uh, the Swedes poisoned their fish supply to uh, keep their Norwegians from stealing it. And the Norwegians just found it tasty. I wish I knew where my Oli and Lena joke book was. There are some good ones in there. Okay. Whoops. I guess so. <laughs> Come on. Ah. Uh, I have not. I've I this is my first exposure to uh to this game. Whoops. Oh, I see. I was supposed to rapidly tap X but then hit triangle to catch once it was close in. Oh, there we go. Ah, it's not always the same button. Got it. Yeah, um, that's part of the reason I enjoy doing this. Um, right now, I'm going through the entire set of uh, PlayStation Magazine demo discs. Um, oh, wait, I can probably catch these guys. No? Okay. Um, I'm on number 82 of 112. Found the mayo. Lovely. Like, that's not mayonnaise, Scoob!
but like i i love how some games are are even uh self-aware in that regard like they'll actually say they'll actually have characters in the demo say look you're getting to play with me right now because this is the demo but in the full game it's going to be a while before you actually run into me Legend of Lagaya did that. Welcome to the stream, by the way, Ryadu. Always nice to see a new face. Shadow page. Oh wait, does that mean I can take out the shadows now? Yup! Gotcha. Alright. Let's go hunt down the other shadows here. Awesome! Yeah, I try to keep up on that uh, whenever I'm doing a demo and change the name to uh, change the category to the correct game just so stuff like that will happen ah there we go No. <laughs> I love how they kind of team up to hold the book steady. <laughs> and we got to see uh, some behind the scenes stuff from uh, Driver and Sly 2 and an interview with Hideo Kojima. There was also a um, there's been kind of a running series taking a look at uh, Gran Turismo 4. Whoops. Couple of save scummy good uh, cool moves. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a good game. I love that thing. Whoops. Oh, this is not going well. Out of the way, Scoob. I do swap and switch it up a little bit, too. Um, the first Tuesday of every month, I take a look at the uh, PS Plus and games with gold freebies. So that'll be tomorrow night. And then uh, most other Tuesdays, I uh, have, well, I've made a start on the Fantasy Star series and finished Fantasy Star 1. Um, I'm working my way through Bra uh, Samurai Legend Musashi. And uh, I'm also going to be doing the uh, rest of the Fantasy series and the uh, Shining Force series. Um, I didn't even start this until I got all of the discs. Uh, I had a bunch of them from my own collection. But uh, I had to kind of supplement that, you know... Uh, I, there's also like 20 to 30 used game stores within a couple mile or a couple of hours of where I live. 
So there's been a lot of um, like, hey, do you have any demo discs? Yeah, we got a pile in a in a box in back. You want to look through them? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, and then what I couldn't find that way, I just uh, you know had to hunt down on uh, eBay. It's a good soundtrack. Um, my favorite piece from that is the uh, um, Time Lord's Realm. I don't have all the magazines. A friend of mine that goes by Round 2 Gaming has that. We got to go back in because there were two other levels to uh, take a look at. So we're going to do that. I do have quite a few of the magazines, but uh, he's actually got almost all of them uh he's been having a hard time finding his the last few but um i've i've also got all of the playstation underground demo discs um i've got as of today i have all of the uh, ps1 interactive demo samplers um I think I've got all of the jam packs. I'd have to say, though, the crown jewel of my demo collection is I have all four demos of the four chapters of the Dot Hack series. So that's kind of fun, too. But I've been a huge fan of demo discs, especially since the PlayStation days, PS1 days. I want to get a hold of um, all the region-specific ones, too. Like, um, you know, the all the UK demo discs. Because uh, the UK, they, they actually uh, kept going into the PS3 generation. <laughs> oh, this hadn't happened before. That's kind of cool. You don't get a game over, you just kind of panic. I like that. <laughs> Grab a couple of Scooby Snacks here. I actually have two UK region demo discs. And uh, one was from the uh, OPM Polish region, and uh, the other is a uh, UK PS3 demo disc. And then I've also got a couple of um, uh, OPM Australia demo discs. <laughs> yeah, back in my day, I've even got some demo discs for the Commodore 64. There's one where if you flipped over the game Hacker and put the other side of the disc into the drive, you'd actually get to watch a couple of demos. Um, I would probably say that my favorite demo disc was one of those, uh, Pizza Hut demos, because that's how I learned about, uh, Crash Team Racing. Like, it was one of those greatest hits things, so it had, uh, Crash Team Racing and Metal Gear Solid and Crash Bandicoot and all the good stuff. There it is. No. Dang it. Okay.
But another reason that I'm doing all of this is that uh, I'm intending to... Like, once I get done recording all the footage for all of these demo discs, I'm uh, putting together a website that will have all the information from all the demo discs. I'm going to put all the... Uh, do I have to zap the trees? No. I'm going to be putting all the, the memory card downloads and everything on there. And... Uh, um... Yeah, so it'll be a nice one-stop shop for uh, any information that you might need to find about what's on a demo disc. <laughs> I, um, I have frequently run out of space. And I don't have anything on the internal storage but shader information. Or no, that's not even the case, because I used a uh, sim link to uh, uh, put the shader information on the uh, SD card. And it still runs out of data. It still runs out of space. Can I go through this door? The door is locked. I need to find a key somewhere. Yeah, 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 probably. The jam packs were good, too. Whoops. I think I have Tail Concerto. If not, I've definitely played that demo. I, I know I've played the full game and completed it. I just can't remember if I borrowed it from a friend or not. That was a good game. Yeah, I know, um, and I've used that to kind of track down some stuff, but it's I still have to keep going in there every once in a while and clearing stuff out. All right, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I need to keep moving on, so we're going to duck out and go on to the uh, third level. This is pretty cool, though. If I was the kind to do, like, a, uh, a a spooky October thing, I'd probably fire that up. Probably be partially because it fits the theme, but also because it's goofy scary. <laughs> oh, yeah, and uh, they uh, tease you with Tail Concerto 2 ad banners in .hack. Make it happen, you cowards. Wait, what? Oh, they just never came to the States. Oops. I thought I was... Okay, okay. I thought it was doing a... Uh, Cutscene. <laughs> I didn't realize I was supposed to be actually playing yet. Ah, uh, oh, this is going to be irritating. <laughs> it feels like it's going to be one of those things where you just have to keep, like, screwing it up. Until you finally memorize it and get through it. 
which is not good for demo. Well, okay. It's not bad for a demo. It's bad for me trying to get through an entire demo disc in under three hours. Um... Demo disc wise, it'll keep you coming back to the demo disc. And there were like, there were some demo discs. Like, I've played the demo for Intelligent Cube probably more than I've actually played Intelligent Cube. Oh, this is, yeah, this is definitely irritating. I mean, at least they gave me a checkpoint to work with, but. They did come out in the U.S., all right. Ah. I've, I remember hearing of Night of a Hundred Frights. I actually have the um, <clears throat> Scooby-Doo game for the Genesis. Uh, I can't remember the name of it offhand. But I liked that it was a uh, kind of a uh, point and click adventure. Oh, well, better watch out, Scoob. I'm going to lose my Scooby snacks. Uh, yeah, I think it was Scooby-Doo Mysteries. Yeah, it was one of those weird uh, situations where there was actually a major difference between the two releases. And not just something for uh, console wars to pick apart. No, not again. Uh, keep screwing up at the same spot. Okay, I think I can survive that. Jump there. There we go. Oh, I landed right on the rock. <laughs> awesome. Happy to help. I love being able to uh, to do that for people. Because there's so many game stores around here that... Uh, and I'm kind of like toward the tail end of finding stuff to collect. Although the, the demo discs uh, have actually grown my wish list again. Ah, dang it. I keep trying to jump a little too late. I'm decent enough with, like, you know, seeing something coming and reacting to it. Not so great at memorization. Or at least it takes a while for me to memorize stuff like this. I have always had a terrible memory. <laughs> Which was very much not helpful when I was in drama class in high school. <laughs> oh, come on. I had that one.
half an hour into the playground and I've only been playing this one game. That does not bode well. Nope. Wrong timing. Is this farther along in the game, or is this, like, toward the beginning? Because this feels like not necessarily the first time you have a cart ride. Ah. Looked away for a moment. It is further along? Alright. One of the things that I've kind of been uh, talking about as I go through these is kind of critiquing the selections of the parts of, of various games for use in the demo. You want to show, whoops, uh, you want to show uh, what someone's going to get when they buy the game and, you know, have a good vertical slice of that. But you also don't want to frustrate them to n into not wanting to buy the game. This would be doing that for me right now. Because I'd be sitting here and I'm, you know, like, okay, well, if I can't get through this here, why would I pay for a game and, you know, struggle through it there, too? Ugh. Because... Unfortunately, I am not, you know, the kid I used to be with unlimited time to uh, try to excel at games like this. Hey, I made it that time. Please give me a checkpoint. Thank you. Oops. Uh, yeah, there, uh, there are some uh, games that have shown up on a lot of different discs. Uh, this one is number 82. Um, it's up in the uh, upper right-hand corner there, right above the game. Whoops. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of feel like that sometimes. Okay, there we go. <laughs> but yeah, that would be another thing uh, that I'd want to make sure you could search for on the uh, on the website is, you know was scooby-doo mystery mayhem on any demo discs if so which discs disc or discs was it on so i'm guessing its next appearance is going to be later because i've not played that yet get a lot of sports games <laughs> <laughs> well okay that that was actually that was from uh that was an actual quote from uh from lower decks why is he smiling what does he know <laughs> so 
This demo will exit after 60 seconds of uh, inactivity. My goodness. All right. I hope they don't count that during the load screens. Like, now I don't want to let them talk through all of this stuff. I'm worried that it's going to... Oh, okay. Well, there we go, I guess. Alright. Um... No strikes. All right, I'm not liking the uh, fast. Um, ball. Three ball count. The 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 um and the pitch. pitching thing here. It's kind of irritating. There we go. I like it in Hot Shots Golf. I don't like it here. Get to left field. Lofton won't catch up to this one. He's on his way to third. They have him in a rundown. He's in there with a triple. That was an impressive triple. He hit the ball to a good spot, put his head down, and just kept on running until. Um, it depends on the. Uh, it depends on the game. Sometimes there'll there'll be a difference. Uh, sometimes there'll be a little bit of a. Uh, sometimes it'll be repetitive. Dang it! Yeah, I knew I wasn't going to get it back there in time. But yeah, there have been some games where uh, um, you actually get like different levels or different tracks or something. One one kind of interesting thing is usually with the sports games, uh, the two teams you get to uh, play with are um, generally the two teams that faced off in that sports championship. So I'm guessing that this year it was the Red Sox versus the uh, the Yankees in the World Series. Uh. The delivery. There's a drive. No one's gonna get it. One. It's up. It's up. It's out of here and gone. In there with a runner on base. That was a huge two run jack. Hey, after a home run like that, the best thing you can do as a pitcher is tip your cap and try and get the next guy. Tip the cap. <laughs> No problem. Thanks for dropping in, Doss Nerd. Rest well. Foul the way to the right. Oh, that was a foul ball. One and one, the count. Wow, that wasn't even close. Better wisely took that pitch for a ball. Ball misses outside. Fly ball hit the other way to left. The left fielder. There we go. The running catch. Kai, you got a great jump on that ball to make a good running catch. Trot, Trot Nixon. Nixon strolls to the plate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ball hit down the right side another one fouled away I will say that the uh, pace of this game is pretty decent that'll go for extra bases 
And he's in there standing with a double. He's going to have to hit the spots with his fastball, or he's going to get ripped all day long. One on and two outs. Fastball misses low for a ball. The pitcher really missed his spot with that fastball, partner. Fouled away to the left. Line straight up the middle. He's rounding third. A run scores. That's an RBI single. Dang it. That was a good piece of hitting. He didn't try to do too much. He just took what they gave him. Up next, Doug Mirabelli. He came up. Oh, ho, ho, ho. That play's going to be all over the highlights tonight. Oh, that was pretty cool. <laughs> I was not expecting that to happen. Starting the game for the visitors, Pedro Martinez. Pedro's fastball is not only effective. Okay, now I get to see how batting works. Okay, so there's nothing to it. It is obviously just, you know, have to keep my eye on it and. Swing the bat. And it's 0 and 2. Kusha. Reese stays with it. That's out yeah. number one. Next up, Derek Jeter. And here's the pitch. He gets the outside corner. Pitcher challenged him with a fastball and he swung right through it. Swings and misses. Got him with the slider. Ah. He didn't waste any time. He went right after. Gets him on three straight strikes. What is that face? <laughs> Holy crap. Fly ball taking the left. That will come on. Get out of there. Alright, good. I was trying to go on to second, but it's probably best I didn't. He always gets it done. You ask him to get something done, boom, he delivers. Next up, Gary Sheffield. Owen won the count. 2004. This pitch is hit to the left side. With one inning played, the Yankees trail by four. <laughs> Uh, I hope that I only had to do one out inning. Nope. They're going to make me do another inning. All right. First pitch. Reese takes low for a ball. Hmm. I wonder what would happen if I did this. Ah. Fine. The pitch misses. Good eye. This one's headed deep to center. <laughs> and this one is gone. <sighs> and the bunch kept going and going and going. Sweet work on the solo. Center field. Whoa, these guys have the pitcher's number today. Are they hitting balls? Well, at least someone's having fun tonight. The ball is headed towards the gap. There's how the th that will get into the gap. How are they constantly getting it in the gap? He's on second with a double. Damon was waiting for the fastball. He got it, and he hits it hard. That's his job. He did it right. Miller comes to the plate. All right. Well, I'm not going to bother with trying to... Strike. Good pitch. That's a nice pitch. Arc the ball at all. He nailed it with a cut fastball. He keeps the ball in the dirt. Hey, after that pitch, the batter better be ready for anything. Do not dig in too deep, big boy. <laughs> the pitch is hit down the line. Get it, get it, get it. it off to the right. Oh, well.
Man on second with no outs. He strikes out swinging. Yay. His timing was way off on that strikeout. The pitcher made him look silly. Now the plate. Shortstop. Garcia Parra. No more. One and oh, the count. And the pitch. Long fly ball. <laughs> oh, no, not again. <laughs> this is a shambles. Sure. Why the hell not? Back to back walk offs. Oh my god. Wow. Surprised he didn't move there. Hey there, Jesha. There's a whoop for you. <laughs> he was able to get good wood on that cutter, and that's not an easy thing to do. That's nice hitting. Pitch missed inside. One on, one out. Nixon swings and hits a ground ball to third base. Boom, <laughs> loves the ball, close play, and he's Why did you just hang on to it? <sighs> steps in at the play. He's one for one. Catch it. There's another single. Oh, it's about time for another home run then, I guess. That one's foul. Pulls one on a line. Well, maybe not a home run, but uh run crosses the play. That's an RBI double. Mirabelli cleared the bases with that double, and now a base hit even scores him. That's a great at bat right there. <laughs> Reese takes strike one at the knees. You put that fastball right where you wanted it, and it froze the hitter. Cut on and miss. He delivers. The pitch is hit to left field. The left fielder is under it. That takes care of the side with two men left. To oh, play. finally. Score Good Lord. This has been brutal. And this is rookie difficulty, too. Wow, I actually got a base hit. It's kind of interesting that he had the uh low slider. Like pulled bat animation way late on that one he went right at the batter with his curveball and he got the swing and strike um like struck him out with the slider real life baseball or video game baseball because <laughs> it's probably been longer that i've incredible oh that was cool it's probably been longer that i've played baseball game baseball video game in earnest than playing it in real life to the right side. Reese feels the grounder. Got him. um the last video game uh, baseball game i remember playing a lot okay we're done with this <laughs> Yeah, I want I want this current game to get 
be lost. Um, but yeah, the the last uh, baseball video game I really played a lot was I think it's called All Star Baseball on the Commodore sixty four. Um, that was pretty fun. Um, but I actually played uh, softball for my uh, um, for a church team when I was in my teens. Ribbit King. I've heard of this, but I don't know what it's about. Kero Kero King. Up and down, change the height of the shot, add a curve to the shot. Well, here's hoping they actually, like, show me how this game works. Frolf? Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Frog in! Oh, not Frisbee Golf. Frog Golf. Okay, this should be interesting. Ribotopia. Turn one. All right. <laughs> oh, why'd you go that way? Okay, I have... N oh, okay, he was, like, still moving straight forward. Got it. Okay, so this is kind of insane. Fun kind of insane. Go. Okay. I was expecting it to slide more. Okay, so it's like golf if your golf ball had, like, a mind of its own. You know what? Yeah, let's just go for it. Whee! No! You hopped right past the gem! Frog in!
Oh, come on! There we go. This is a weird little game. It's kind of awesome. I'm not in. I I don't like how random it is, as far as like, you know, knowing where your your frogs ultimately going to end up. But it's still kind of an interesting concept. Ah, uh, dang it. I thought I had that balloon. Okay, yeah. yeah. well, at least he didn't do any better. <laughs> I wonder if I can like, get both balloons. Oh, I see. Well, let's try that. <clears throat> okay, so going through the balloon doesn't do any good. Again. Good. Hey. Yeah. So it seems like part of this is getting lots of points, but like the longer it takes for you to get into the hole the less points you get for getting into the hole. Oh, you're supposed to land on the question mark. Got it. His frog almost jumped right over the pit. Okay, well, I'm I'm making progress. Interesting. Oh, the frame rate. <laughs> Okay, let's see if we can pull this off here. We That's exactly what I wanted to do. That is not what I intended to do. <laughs> I don't blame you. This this does seem like something that's right up your alley. Okay, where is... Okay, there's the gem. Alright. Um, let's see if we can... Alright. Try that. Good. There we go. Good, good. 
That is exactly what I was hoping to do. Uh-oh. Okay, you get the question mark thing, fine. But you are still nowhere near the gem. Go. Dang it! Okay, I feel like I got ripped off there. <laughs> it's Frolf. It's Frog Golf. Oh, wow. That was a pl uh fortunate jump. Good. This is Ribbit King. It's a cute game, but it is really struggling to hold a, uh, a solid frame rate here. <laughs> Well, I I was intending to get close to the hole. I just didn't think it'd actually get in. Look at that, I'm actually ahead now. No, that doesn't sound familiar. Oh, well, yeah, that would explain it. <laughs> I've never actually touched an Ouya. Right past all those 50-point bubbles. <laughs> Alright, at least he got a 10-point bubble. And a 30-point fly. Uh oh. Well, it's good to know that's there. Okay. I actually kind of want to see what happens if I get in there. Yeah, a little bit. It's a warp toily. <laughs> he looks so tired. Does Kemco have that bad of a reputation uh, for crappy anime games, or just that they're everywhere? <laughs> gotcha. Oh, he jumped right over it! Oops, how could I have ever missed the correct side of the, the uh, sling?
And now the result. Your score so far is this. Yay. The I won. Bonus for this round is for this. For this many points. And the bonus goes to you. That's not me. So the winner is this player. Hooray! Hooray! The winner is awarded all these points. Oh wow. The end. <laughs> the end. Want to buy this? A lucky plaque is 800 coins. Want to buy it? Sure. I'll take it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I'll buy it with some of the money that you gave me for losing. So this is an interesting uh, um, difference too. It almost seems like the the name of the game is Ribbit King Plus, but it's Ribbit King. I, I know I've seen Ribbit King in the United States. Let me check this out. So that was another one of those uh, interesting demo differences. Uh, the demo for Mega Man Legends... It was the Japanese demo, which said, uh, which obviously was called Rockman Dash. Um, but the label on the game on the disc was something else entirely. I can't remember the name. Okay, we get to play some arcade classics here. We got Smash TV. I know how to play Smash TV. <laughs> big money, big prizes. I love it. Yeah, I know. That's a terrible name. <laughs> oh. Bingo. 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 Man, this sounds this sounds like a midway game. Like it's got that twang to it. It's kind of interesting that they put the uh, watermark down in the corner. You'll need it. <laughs> Good luck. You'll need it. Whoa. Dang it. Why did they put a uh, power up right on top of a mine? Dang it. No, I wanted that spread shot. Woo! 
brand new toaster. Wow, that's like a whole 12 bucks. It's uh, kind of awesome that you can, that, uh, you know, this is happening on a system with dual analog controls. Um, I actually do own this game. Both on the PS2 and the uh, PS3 Midway Arcade Classics. In fact, I did a first trophy video on YouTube on uh, Midway Arcade Classics. Yeah, y'all. Ah. I gotta get to Mutoid, man. Wow, this is just like playing it in the arcade. In that I don't have to worry about any quarters because it's on free play. <laughs> we have an arcade nearby that uh, does the whole cover charge... Uh, but everything's on free play thing. I've actually done a couple of live streams from there. Meet Mr. Shrapnel. Uh, I don't think I can have another bite. It's way for thin. Ah, fair enough. Whoops. Bonus prizes. There we go. Extra life, which I immediately squander. Yeah, so you get uh, a wristband, and uh, the wristband's good for the day. Um, Galloping Ghost does the same thing near Chicago. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, the Garcade is much less cramped. Um, the the uh, Galloping Ghost is definitely something that, that you should experience at some point. Um, but preferably on off hours because uh, there is barely enough room uh, in the aisles for people to walk past each other but it is chock full of games some of which don't exist anywhere else like they they've actually resurrected some prototypes and put it on the floor 
Like there's a Beavis and Butthead arcade game. Uh, a couple of others that I can't remember offhand. Whoop. Did I run out of time? They didn't even let me get to Mutoid Man. Dang it. Yep, they definitely have House of the Dead. They've got quite a few uh, light gun games. Uh, Paperboy. I'm nowhere near as good at Paperboy. <laughs> Paper boy, stopping at nothing in his valiant effort to save the planet. Oops. From TV journalism. What button am I supposed to use? Oh. R1? Weird. Well, you know what the best way to make a customer is? Give them some of your product for free. Honestly can't believe that I've made those two... This is probably the best I've ever done on Paperboy, to be honest. It's kind of interesting. Um, uh, I'm using the right analog stick to pedal faster. And R1 to uh, throw a paper. Which feels pretty similar to the actual... Uh, uh oh. Who put this hearse here? Yeah, holy crap! <laughs> Oops. Ooh, that paper boy's got us. Foul of a mouth on him as Qbert does. Dang it. Oh, training grounds already. All right. Oh, wow. That course timer was going down fast. Twisty. Ooh. Actually got it in the uh, mailbox there. Oops. Ah! Damn it, lady. I'm sorry I broke your window. Zap! No! That lady's got it out for me. Paperboy calls it quits.
paper. Yeah, I think I'm good. <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> no actual damage, just, you know, frayed nerves. Another baseball game? MLB Slugfest Loaded. <laughs> Something tells me they aren't actually going to be playable in game. All right, let's see how we do now. I, I like the movement of the menus here. Well, now we've got the Cubs and the Yankees. So I'm guessing that this is kind of like the uh, baseball version of NFL Blitz. Hey, uh, Jimmy, what do you got on tap this weekend? Uh, I'm probably just sitting at home, relaxing. Because I uh, really need your help uh, moving this weekend. Uh, I hate to do this last minute, but if you could show up around nine, we're gonna probably be finished by four. I'm not gonna. I know. I quit doing that a long time ago. You know what? We'll have pizza at the end of the day. It's on me. How about that? Oh well, you're gonna have pizza. Yeah. Why, why didn't you say so? Well, let me work 18, 19 hour a day for a couple of slices. <laughs> Don't want to accidentally like time out the demo. Tim Gitzra and Jimmy Shorts along with you. And Jimmy, the ballpark looks beautiful, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Nice big crowd, lots of youngsters out there. Hey, I'll, look what I found, a black jelly bean. That's it. Ah! Oh, I don't think it, that was a jelly bean. I wonder did I just think? And here comes the top of the order in the first. Patterson gets ready. All right. And now the pitch. That was some serious heat. How can that be a strike? The pitcher's got to throw the ball first. Oh, whoa, I guess he threw the ball already. And he's not what the to hell? Knuckle sandwich. In order to hit, you have to bring two things together. The bat and the ball. Hit hard on the there we go. The they better get an extra bucket of balls. This well, I hope he actually runs. Releases. Shows him the speed for a strike. Just goes to show you, partner, one of the hardest things to do in sports is hit a baseball. 0-1. Hit hard into right field. Sheffield makes the catch. One out <clears> at <throat> first base. Baloo stands in. Oh, with the high heat. This pitcher better watch out. He's going to set off some smoke detectors. You know what? I hate <laughs> smoke detectors. That loud beep wakes you up at night. And that was just an absolutely nasty cut there, Jimmy. Oh, baby, he's going to crush it next time. Oh, you watch. The volcano. And he looks at a call <laughs> Set him up. 
What the hell was that? You seen him with the windup? Oh, that was a nice pitch. You can tell this guy's got a big swing. Did you ever see him walk? I mean, whoa. You seen him? The windup. Ground smash right side. I don't know how to try to go for an extra base. <clears throat> there are two outs. Men on first and second. Line shot over the first baseman's head. Sheffield ah. puts it away. And that ends the top half of the inning. Hi, Siren. Can I hop up? One half inning of play, there you go. Tied at zero. And here comes the first batter to lead off the inning. Lofton stands in. Tim, I was wondering, do you think vendors have to wash their hands after they use the restroom? Employees must wash hands. It's the law. I seen you in the bathroom. You don't wash your hands. Well, I had a special clause put in my contract. I can't afford to be... Let's throw it to the... Oh. To the what the hell? That's why I keep this coffee can out of my bathroom. No, I have to use the right analog stick instead of the face buttons. Wood stares down the batter. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> what to go for a ball? You can wait all your life, and the right one may never come along. I mean, just like in the soaps. And it counts at one and one. And that wasn't where he wanted it. He's been showing a lot more patience since he took up Hyper meditation. Cat. He can wait for pitches for, you know, like six hours. Patterson picks it up. Oops. There's a ah. base hit to center. <laughs> oh, you dick. Jeez. No outs, runners at second and third. Foul. You know what? I can afford this. Oh, he just got plunked right in the coconut. No doubt he has a marimba band playing in Oh, wow. No outs, bases are jammed. I had to see what it the smash left side. Oh, come on. The Yankees go out in front. And the ball is knocked loose. Jeter heads for home. The Yankees extend their lead. <laughs> you digging this, Red? I mean that's that that's the whole point of these. You know, showing people the game, getting them to actually buy it. Hey, I got an out. <laughs> that was perfectly cut. <laughs> and so there are two outs, men on first and third. Patterson feels this one on the bounce. Safe at second base. <laughs> Jeez. He just dropped the ball. And he popped that ball. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is kind of hilarious. First and second, Wilson steps in, low and inside. Surprised he didn't swing at that, even though it was out of the strike zone. It was in the batter's red zone. Pitch on the way. Takes one down and in. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. That's pretty good odds. Two and zero. He took a good cut, but couldn't connect. It looks like his arms popped out of the joints on that swing. Hard 
Ground ball, left side. Ah. Uh. And he dropped the ball, and the ball pops loose. And the ball is not loose. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I mean, at least this is fun. I, I wasn't really having a lot of fun with the other one. took a little something off that one. totally fooled him. I talked to this guy before the game about a swing. At least I tried to, but he didn't say anything. Williams takes a cold strike. Owen twos the count. And he looks at the Back to riding the pines. At the end of one... New York leads by three. That was pretty interesting. Hi, kitty. Purr, purr, purr. <laughs> Which button is that? Bujin Kai, the Forsaken City. Oh, we're to the videos already? Sweet. <laughs> Fair enough. What in the world is going on? This looks kind of interesting. Very stylish. Ah, Taito, okay. Way of the Samurai 2. Wait, wasn't that like a, an RPG on the PS1? If it's what I think it is, that was actually pretty fun. Or maybe not fun, but it was impressive. <laughs> big cuddles big rumbles I love it summer 2004 okay we get a look at Sly 2 Band of Thieves 
And Metal Gear Solid 3 coming up too. This is one of those games that absolutely nailed um, the balance of um, presentation and capability of the console. Like, it doesn't have as much detail as some games do, but it works for the art style perfectly. And because it, it's not quite as detailed, uh, the PS2 can handle it perfectly smoothly. That said, I don't think I've ever really completed Sly 2. I've completed the first game, and I've played a little bit of Sly 2, but I don't think I ever finished it. Move over, Danny Ocean. You know, when they were talking about uh, um, doing heist stuff in Sly 2, I actually looked up to see when this came out in relation to Ocean's Eleven, because it felt like they were might have been inspired by that. And uh, that was 2001, and this is 2004. Okay, next we get a look at MGS3, and then we've got an ESRB commercial and we're done for the night. I think I am actually just going to wrap it up early tonight, um, rather than play something out for the last half hour, because i got a little bit of a headache tonight. Earlier on in the night, we had a uh, an interview with Hideo Kojima about basically about him and a little bit of what he wanted to try to accomplish with uh, video gaming.
snake eater. Survive survival. <laughs> I think I'll just take a nap here. <laughs> yep, definitely a good idea to just hang around for a bit. Now I'm Liquid Snake. I love that they went with the whole, uh, like, 60s bond music thing. <laughs> no one here but us crocodiles. <laughs> All right, and then we've got an ESRB rating video because that was new. I love sports, but you gotta know what games are right for you. Same with computer and video games. That's why parents have to make sure each game is right for their kids. How? Check the rating. Every computer and video game has a rating symbol that tells you what age group the game is best for. There's also a content label that tells you what's in the game. When you check the rating, the control's in your hand. <laughs> See? You gotta play the game that's right for you. Nice. <laughs> Alright, that's it for the night. Um, tomorrow night, again, we've got the uh, free dive. So we're going to be taking a look at PS Plus and games with gold freebies. Um, but uh, we're going to go raid Dr. Cossack tonight. Uh, he is playing the uh, Super Metroid Super uh, Super Metroid Link to the Past randomizer tonight, which has always fascinated me. So thanks to everybody for dropping by tonight. I always appreciate it. Uh, rest well when you do. And in the meantime, enjoy Dr. Cossack.